Philip Enriquez, Eric Hernandez for the Red and Blue Rivalry Podcast, brought to you by Say What You Like. And we're talking wide receivers on this one, man. And this is the first one where it's kind of close, right? I mean, yeah. in my opinion, this is the closest one yet. Yes. This is the one where I think I think we have vastly different opinions on quarterback. I think we mostly agree on running back. But this is the one that, you know, we look at just the talent level. And I think that the biggest difference between the overall talent of the San Francisco wide receivers roster and the Dallas Cowboys is simply Amari Cooper and what he's proven. Cooper turned it around, man. With Cooper, or without Cooper, I should say, we started, what, three and four, dropped to three and five, and then end up going and winning the division at the end of the year. Ten and six. A lot of that was Amari Cooper. I mean, he opened up things for Ezekiel Elliott. He opened up running lanes, you know, took the safety out of the box, made some big plays even in the loss to the Los Angeles Rams. It made some big plays. I think his ability to separate. Right. And, I mean, and, I think and, he's and, one of the most underrated route runners of of this era. Yeah. And I think that of especially over this time and, and, and these guys, and you look at like what, you know, we talked on previous podcasts about Dak. You know, he kind of wants to see the receiver wide open. Well, you know, that kind of fits Amari Cooper. Taylor made. Taylor made for Dak Prescott who wants to see the open man because Amari Cooper gets open on just about every play. Okay. I like Amari. I like Dante Pettis, but I see Pettis more like a number two. And we talked about this earlier, too. Yes. So it's like, all right, what's the progression for Dante Pettis? What you hope for is that he takes a similar leap that George Kittle took. George Kittle's numbers his first year were not great because he was hurt. You know, you had the issues of the quarterback once Garoppolo came. His numbers improved, but he was still battling injuries. So you want to see him have the same progression. If you watch clips of him, Dante Pettis' abilities of separation are on par with Amari Cooper. Now, he's not, he hasn't stayed healthy. He hasn't put up the numbers. He has a similar thing like we talk about Garoppolo. You know, he just went through battle through injuries. You know, you want to see him another year in the system, everybody healthy. And I think Dante Pettis can honestly be the equal of Amari Cooper. They're built, I think, similar. I think they have similar traits where they, they have the ability. Maybe they're not big receivers. They're not six foot four, 230. They don't jump you know this high but they they win with separation and speed they win they're technicians of their craft and i think that's what you're looking for with dante pettis is for him to take that step to become that almari cooper that guy that if you give him an inch he's going to take a five yards and then grapple is going to find him and then he's going to turn it 30 40 yards for a touchdown but, but what a- about like behind dante pettis I mean, you guys got a couple of rookies. Yes. The two rookies that were drafted was Debo Samuel in the second round. Right. And the controversial one was Jalen Hurd. Right, because yeah. he was supposed to be like a running back. Yeah. Well, he was a running He was right, the he one was running back. He was the one who was in front of uh, Alvin Kamara. So, what? Don- okay, Debo. You don't get the nickname Debo and not be hard. Just, it is what it is. I'm just... All right. Yeah. That, how many other Debos? That I movie's been out for a long time. Have a you heard any other Debos? long time. No. All right, okay. at the wide receiver position? No. I need him and Akeem Talib to throw hands. Ooh, that'd be nice. I want him to wear a chain. Time to take his chain. Yeah, yeah yep, yeah. it's time. <laughs> you know, and with Debo Samuel, you have a guy, and you know they all fit this thing that Shanahan wants. Is these guys that are not, they're not big. They're not the Calvin Johnsons of the world because those don't grow on trees. And if you find those guys, they normally don't have the traits that a Calvin Johnson or Julio Jones has. So you go with a Debo Samuel who is built almost like Steve Smith. He's strong, thick, built like a running back. Strong, thick, can get off press coverage, can get open, can catch the ball. There's a play when he was uh, in college, when he was in South Carolina, where he literally took a five-yard slant at like the 10-yard line and he took it almost the whole way he got pulled he got dragged down like the 10 yard line so he took it almost 80 plus yards you know that's what shanahan wants shanahan wants guys and they all have the same trait can you separate with your route running can you catch the ball do you have that ability to run after the catch and not just him but i think what a lot of people that don't know or outside the san francisco bubble is how hurt Trent Taylor was. Trent Taylor was a big key to Garoppolo's success. He was that slot receiver on third down. He was the Julian Edelman, the Amendola of his time. You know, he was that guy of this team where it's third and four, third and five. He's in the slot. He's going to find a way to get open. He's going to catch five yards and he's going to go down. It's only five yards, but it's a first down. Right. 
And so move the chains. Speaking of slot receivers, you guys lost yours. Yeah, Cole Beasley, you know, he's pretty fucking salty these days. Yeah. You know, talking a lot of crap about the Cowboys, and I get it. Buffalo facilities up, are we better. We all get salty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and they probably are. But the bottom line is, you know where we got better? Hmm. Slot receiver. Straight up. I think we're better at the slot receiver. I And, I, and I'm and i not talking shit because Cole Beasley's not on the team anymore. I yeah. like Cole Beasley. I think he's a very – he's a quality slot receiver. But that's exactly what he is. A slot receiver. If Cole Beasley signed with the 49ers and he had a, you had to play him outside, are you confident in that? Nope. No. He's strictly a slot receiver. But Randall Cobb, he can play on the outside. He can play inside. He can take it deep. He could run the comebacks, the short routes, the slants, the, the drags. It's just going to be able to make the Cowboys offense more versatile than it was last season. So I feel like we upgraded at the slot receiver position. And somebody that I'm really looking forward to seeing is Michael Gallup because he came on late in the season. And I think he's showed an, shown enough athletic ability. I think he's shown enough. You know, he's getting better in his route running as the season progressed. And I'm willing to see, hey, is this guy going to be a legitimate number two wide receiver? And if he is with Cooper and with Cobb, of course, I'm projecting here. But it's not outside of the realm of possibility that the Cowboys have one of the best wide receiving corps in the NFL with Cobb, with if Gallup. Hey, you're you're counting on Pettis to be the number one. I'm only counting on Gallup to be the number two because I'm confident that, like you said, the big difference is Cooper at the number one. Uh, his response is because I almost chugged my whole bear right now at that statement. Do I think they can be good? Yes. Do I think they can be the best? I don't know about that. They can be in the top five. Easy. I think a lot depends on your OC. But let me ask you this. Like when I look at what I'm looking for in training camp for the wide receivers, you know, we, we talk about health, but let's just put health aside. Let's assume that health is not an issue. You know, for me, being a 49ers fan and look at these receivers – I just want to see if they're competent. And the guy that I didn't talk about previously that I just want to mention real quickly is their third-round rookie, Jalen Hurd, who is, unlike the outside receivers, is primarily a slot receiver and is also like six foot four. So he's kind of inverted the offense. You know, the you know normally you want your bigger guys outside. Out on the outside. Or slot guy inside. You know, he's kind of like a different type of, of slot receiver. You know, like a Jordan Matthews, who they also have. You know, to kind of right. to train. And what you want from him is his ability to catch the ball. Just like that. he's a running back. Get the ball, separate. So it'll be interesting, his progression. I want to see, and it's hard because the Niners receiving course is very young. Outside of Goodwin, they're all young. They're all within the first three years, you know, and, and Matthews, you know. So you have Trent Taylor, you know, you have Pettis, Debo, Hurd, Kendrick Bourne. You know, these guys are young receivers. You just want to see them continue to grow, get separations, and catch the ball. But for you, what are you looking for for your wide receivers during training camp in the preseason? I'm looking for some of the young wide receivers to step up like a Gallup. I'm looking to see Cobb show that he's multifaceted, much like what the 49ers look for in their offense. You know, someone that can play anywhere, run any route, run the entire route tree. You know, all nine routes and basically just give Dak all the more options. I mean, it's really as simple as that because we were pretty stuck in stone. Beasley was our slot. You know, Dez was our X receiver. And we always had a second receiver that complimented him running the Y routes. And that was it. It's very cut and dry. But now I feel like there's just so much potential for versatility with the wide receiver corpse now. So I'm looking for that. Yeah, I mean, speaking as as someone who has seen that, like in a Kyle Shanahan offense, I mean, it's an awesome thing to see. Now, you're not going to get your Julio Jones or your Calvin Johnson numbers because there is no one. But the ability to say, okay, Mark Cooper, you're outside on this one. You're in the slot on this one. You're on the other side. You're the right. X, the Y, the flanker. You're able to do this. You're going to run, you know, the reverse. You're going to do stuff where, you know, the difference I used to say about the Dallas offense and why they I felt like they needed a wide receiver, a big 
number one wide receiver, and I never felt that the Niners did, was because of the play calling and Kyle Shanahan. If Dallas is that's what they're becoming as far as the offense being more multiple, the receivers learning different positions, then you're not going to see what you're used to with like, okay, I'm just going to throw it up to Dez. The days of Romo throwing it to Dez are gone, but you know, you're going to get to see a more prolific offense, you know, an offense that's more dynamic, that's more diverse, that will play to Dak's strengths because I think right. Dak's not comfortable. Like, and I mean, a lot of, I mean, you have to be a Brett Favre mentality type to just throw it up there, you know? Normally, we, you know, guys want to see them have a bit of a lead. So when I look at the Niners and the Dallas Cowboys receivers, I mean, they're neck and neck. It's at the end of the day, the two questions are, can Cooper keep it up and can Pettis catch up? 